welcome back guys and welcome back to another video and today we're doing another video it's called tower smasher today we will be making this game the objective of this game is to launch the ball to hit the blocks that are stacked together the less launches you use the more points you will get tower smasher you can find this game idea in the books called code your own games 20 games to create with scratch it's a very cool book that you can use so you can absolutely check out the book so we will be learning these following concepts in scratch there's variables loops touching color pen and broadcasting messages so before i start please like share and subscribe to our channel to support us if you did thank you for your support so any any you can also share it with your friends that would be awesome so i'll just demo the game right now let's put it full screen as you can see when i start it it has some music and then um you have a ball and an arrow and then like the arrow, there's like a pen surrounding it. And then you're supposed to shoot the ball and it collects 19 score. And it'll be 18 for the next shot and 17 and so on. Um, so yeah, as you can see, that was 18. And if you run out of um, lunches, which I'm it's 20. So I'm gonna try to get all of these people. So, as you can see, um, this is going pretty well. You get the score, and we're going to wait until that goes. Um, I got one more. As you can see, I scored 116. Let's stop the project. And let's create a new project. So, I already have things built for me, like the blocks and the backdrop and stuff. So it's right in the backpack. I can load the sprite. I just forgot to name it block. Block. And then we can also load the backdrop in. So, there you go. We can also delete the cat before we go on. So I'll demonstrate how you draw the backdrop. So, um, we can check this one out. I'm gonna try to draw it for you guys. So first, we gotta make the square, I mean the rectangle. You can draw it whatever you want. I'm gonna enlarge it and center it. So we can also change the fill of it to fade in or out, whatever you call it. And then the green spot sh sh can be white. That'd look pretty well. So as you can see, um, you can look at the backdrop. It's white on the bottom and blue on the top. So you can also add the grass and the dirt, the earth. Uh, so I have the dark green color. So I'm gonna draw the earth next, the dirt mound. So we can um, duplicate it, control C and control V, like a normal copy paste. And then we can also put it there and then we can just change the color. So I just zoomed in for better, um, so that you can see it better. Uh, we can take the fill or we can just use um, whatever that color is, the brand color so I just did that we don't need the fade in and out for this one 
we can just do normal fill. And then we can just take that. So as you can see, there's two colors, green and brown. So if there aren't that um, um, good looking, you can also use the group tool. It's all the way up here. And you can group these two together. As you can see, it moves both of them. But normally it would not. Let's delete uh, this one because we already have this one already out. And um, are you, I can teach you how to draw the block. It's just easy. It's just uh, two rectangles, basically. And you can just group them and you can make them more closer to each other. That's basically how you do it. Uh, so I'm going to get my sprites. You know, so paint and paint a new one. I'm going to show you. We can take the um, um, eyedropper. So if you did not know that, you can actually take an eyedropper type of thing. And then I can make like a small block. Well, it's really small right now. I can make it larger. And as we did, we can do control C and control V to make the other chunk. We can just put this on the bottom or top, it doesn't matter. And then change the color of the top one. You can use the arrow keys to move, adjust it. Um, we can change the color of that. As you can see, that's pretty even. So we can change it to a lighter green. It's around the same color. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's two blocks, and then you can also group them together to make them more easier to. You can group them to make them easier to move. Since I already have one, I can delete this one. Okay, so let's get our sprites. We need the arrow. Arrow sprite. The arrow. We also need the ball. Right there. Um, and we gotta make eight variables. Uh, we can make the variable block count. Ball speed. H gap. H speed. Launches. Score. V gap. And V speed. But we can just rename this one V speed. So, these are all the things. We can hide all of them, except, well, we don't have to hide them right now, but we can hide them later. Um, those, these are all our variables. So, as you can see, this sprite's at 100%. I might turn it to 50 if that's too big. Yeah, let's keep it at 100. Yeah. So, let's work on the grass block, or the block. Um, we have to put the block, make a block, create pile. So, let's zoom in, set block count to zero in the beginning. It will repeat 10 times. Create clone of myself. I think it's actually in this one. So it'll make like duplicates of itself. And it'll change the block count by one for each one. And then it'll hide. And then when you start, when flag is um when the green flag is clicked, it will show 
and it'll create the pile. I'll run this code. So we're still on this code. So when I start as a clone, I'm sorry, I clicked on that one. You can move like that. So let's move that up there. Let's move it right here so you can see it better. It will set. It will set fall speed to zero. And it'll go to you need this one go to and then pick random two pick randoms pick random 180 to 200 and negative 170 and you need division so i'm sorry it's actually not pick random it's actually an add negative 170 and this is actually a multiply i meant multiply not divide and then block count 35. so this pick random 180 to 200 is for like if it stacks like here and here and here and here and all stuff and then this is for making the bottom one is negative 170. And each time it creates a block, it will add 35. So we need a repeat until equal sign, a block count equals zero. That's when we basically win. Block count equals zero. You also need an if then statement it's touching the ball because that's where the that you're supposed to launch the ball at it and then hide oh change the score by launches so that's why um you're supposed to you get more points if you get less launches so launches and then change the block count to minus one. Um, we can also start the sound pop. It, it, you can, it's optional. Um, and then we can also set the horizontal speed, which is basically H speed, horizontal speed, a horizontal speed to multiply, multiply negative 0.8 to h speed horizontal speed and we need another if then statement if not you need or touching not i mean no i, I meant not you also need a not in front of that if it's not and you also need an or Hutching color. So you actually have to select the bottom and the top color. So let's use this one to top color. And we can also do touching color. I think this one's the same color, I'm pretty sure it is. I should double check. Okay, so touching both of them. And then it will change the fall speed by 0 0.1, negative 0 0.1. Also change the y by fall speed. Change y by fall speed makes the blocks drop on top of each other. And then we need a broadcast message all the way in the back. Complete game. Let's test it. Let's see what we got. As you can see, the blocks are falling on each other correctly. 
But if they aren't falling on each other correctly, it's probably because of the size or or the, the size, you can adjust the size or the Y position. So, Cause it's like 35 basically. So if you turn it to 40, some might get stuck in on top. So let's see what happens. See, as you can see, some got stuck on top. So we can change that back to 35. Depending on the block, you either have to change the size or this and this. So anyways, thanks. We'll be working on the ball and the arrow in the next part. So thanks for watching everyone and see you guys next time.